At universities in England, May is the month of examinations. Paul was lying on the grass in front of the examination hall. His friends, Sheila and Charles, were sitting near him. The three of them were first-year students at university. They were sitting their first-year exams. Paul and Charles were 19, and Sheila was a year younger. The next exam began in half an hour's time. But the three students were not talking about the next examination. They were talking about their holidays. Where are you going this summer? Sheila asked Paul. To Wales, Paul replied. I'm going to stay in a cottage in the country. You have a cottage in Wales? asked Charles. It's not my cottage, replied Paul. It belongs to my uncle. He usually goes there for his holidays every summer. But this year he's going to Greece, and I'm going to stay in his cottage for two months, July and August. Where are you going for your holidays? Paul asked. We don't know, replied Sheila. We haven't decided yet. Why don't you both come to Wales? said Paul. You can stay with me for a week or two. What do you think, Charles? asked Sheila. The college bell rang loudly. It was time for the next examination. We'll talk about it after this exam, Charles replied. Let's go now. The students got up from the grass. They picked up their notebooks and hurried towards the examination hall. Three hours later, the examination was over. Paul, Sheila and Charles were sitting in a cafe. What's your uncle's cottage like? Sheila asked Paul. Paul took a photograph out of his wallet. It looks lovely, said Sheila. It is lovely, agreed Paul, but it's very lonely. There are no houses near the cottage and there's no electricity and no telephone. Oh, let's go and stay with Paul, Sheila said to Charles. OK, agreed Charles. We can stay there for a week. The three students made arrangements for their holiday in Wales. Come on the 5th of August, said Paul. That's a Monday. The train from London arrives at Clanvoy station at half past one. Where's Clanvoy? asked Sheila. It's a small railway station near the cottage, answered Paul. Fast trains from London stop there. How do we get from the station to the cottage? asked Charles. Look, I'll draw a map, said Paul. The railway line goes through a long tunnel before Clanvoy station. The cottage is on the hill above this tunnel. Charles gave Paul his diary. Paul drew a map and wrote down the name and address of the cottage. There you are, said Paul, but don't worry, I'll meet you at Clanvoy station. I'll see you there on Monday the 5th of August at half past one. It is the 5th of August. Sheila and Charles arrive at Clanvoy station in Wales. Ah, here we are, Clanvoy. Where's Paul? He's late. Let's walk to the cottage. Oh, he'll be here soon. Just then, a soldier walked past. Excuse me, is there a cafe near here? Uh, yes, outside the station. Charles, what's in those bags? I don't know. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Sheila and Charles went into the small cafe. There was a young girl behind the counter. Sheila went up to her. Has a young man been in here this morning? asked Sheila. 
A uh, soldier? asked the young girl. No, not a soldier, a student, replied Sheila. Oh, we see a lot of soldiers here, said the girl, but no students. Charles asked for two coffees. He sat down with Sheila at a table near the window. Paul's forgotten about our visit, he said. We'll have a coffee, then we'll walk to Hilltop Cottage. They sat at the table and looked out of the window. Some soldiers were loading bags into the lorry. Other soldiers were standing on guard. The girl brought the coffees. What's in those bags? Charles asked her. Banknotes, replied the girl. The money comes from London by train. Then the soldiers take it to a large army camp near here. What do they do with the money? Sheila asked. I don't know, said the girl, and she walked away. They're probably old banknotes, said Charles. After some years, the government destroys old banknotes and new money is printed. The money in those bags will not be used anymore. Charles and Sheila waited in the cafe. Paul did not come. It was now after two o'clock. They left the cafe and walked to a crossroads. Charles looked at Paul's map. Sheila pointed to a signpost. That's the road to Barconi, she said. They pulled their rucksacks onto their shoulders and walked along the road. It was a very hot day. The sun was shining brightly and they walked slowly. After an hour, they came to a telephone box. On the left, there was a narrow lane into the woods. The telephone box is on Paul's map, said Charles. This is the way to the cottage. They walked up the narrow lane. Tall trees grew on each side. The branches were thick with leaves. It's dark in here, said Charles. There's no sun. It's nice and cool after the hot road, replied Sheila. Anyway, Paul's cottage is higher up. It'll be brighter up there. They walked farther up the steep, dark lane. I don't like this place, said Charles. It's too dark. What a place for a holiday. Oh, come on, said Sheila. Sheila and Charles arrived at the cottage. There were high trees all round it. There's something wrong, said Charles. Look at the curtains. They're all closed. There's no one here. Don't be silly, said Sheila. She went up to the cottage and knocked loudly on the door. They waited for some time. Sheila pushed at the cottage door. It did not open. It was locked. Paul, shouted Charles. Paul, are you there? There was no reply. Sheila knocked again on the door. They stood and listened. There's someone inside, said Sheila. I heard a noise. Listen. They both stood in silence. Someone unlocked the door. It's Paul, said Charles. Why is he taking so long? The door slowly opened. A tall man with a beard stood in the doorway. He was about 40 years old. Sheila and Charles did not know him. He was a stranger. Who are you? asked the stranger. What do you want? The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Sheila looked up at the tall man. Is Paul in? she asked. Paul? said the stranger. There's no one here with that name. You've made a mistake. The stranger slowly closed the door. But this cottage belongs to Paul's uncle, said Sheila. We saw it in a photograph. It was another cottage in your photograph, said the man. It wasn't this one. This cottage is mine. I live here. The man was becoming angry. You've made a mistake, he shouted. I don't like visitors here. Go away. The door closed with a loud bang. Sheila turned away from the door. She saw a piece of paper under a bush. 
she stopped and quickly picked up the paper. We've made a mistake, said Charles. Paul isn't here. We've come to the wrong cottage. Let's go back to the road. They walked back down the lane. After a few minutes, Sheila stopped. The cottage was now behind the trees. Sheila opened the piece of paper and looked at it in surprise. We haven't made a mistake, she said to Charles. Look at this. Charles took the paper and looked at it. It's an examination paper, he said. It's our exam paper. We sat this exam in May. Paul sat this exam too. So Paul is here. Something is wrong. Look, there's an old building. We'll wait there. But what are we going to do? We'll go back to the cottage tonight. We must find Paul. Listen, I can hear a noise. It's a lorry. It's coming up the lane to the cottage. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Sheila and Charles waited in the old building. Slowly it became dark. They walked quietly back to the cottage and hid behind a bush. A lorry was parked near the cottage door. They waited quietly in the darkness. Suddenly a man hurried up the lane. He knocked at a window of the cottage. The door opened quickly. Everything is okay, Frank, said the man outside. Bill has telephoned from London. He's put sleeping pills in the guard's coffee. Good, said Frank. We can start now. Get the bags out of the lorry and into the cottage. What's happening? Charles asked Sheila. Bill's put sleeping pills in the guard's coffee. What does that mean? And what's in those bags? I don't know, said Sheila. Listen, they're talking again. What about that young man? One of the men asked Frank. We'll leave him in the upstairs bedroom, Frank replied. He's tied up tightly. He'll be found tomorrow. By then, we'll be far from here. Paul's in the cottage, Sheila whispered to Charles, and he's a prisoner. Four men carried all the bags into the cottage. They closed the door behind them and locked it. Paul's in one of the upstairs bedrooms, said Sheila. We must help him. How are you going to get into the cottage? asked Charles. They've locked the door. I'll climb up onto the top of the porch, said Sheila. Then I'll get in through a window. Sheila and Charles waited for half an hour. Then they walked up quietly to the front door. There were no lights in the cottage. Help me up, Charles, said Sheila. Sheila stood on top of the porch. She reached up and pulled at the window. It opened slowly and made a loud noise. Sheila waited for a few moments. Nothing happened. She opened the window wide. The curtains inside were closed. She opened them carefully and climbed into the bedroom. In the dark room, Paul was lying on a bed. He was tied up tightly and there was a gag over his mouth. Sheila quickly took off the gag. Shh, she said. Don't make a noise. There are some men downstairs. It's all right, said Paul. They won't hear us. They're not in the cottage. They're out at the back. Sheila slowly untied the ropes round Paul. What's happening? she asked him. Who are those men? What are they doing? They're going to rob a train tonight. Rob a train? asked Sheila in surprise. They found an old shaft behind the cottage, said Paul. The shaft goes down into the railway tunnel. They're going to change the signal in the tunnel. The signal light will be red 
and the train will stop. Now I understand, said Sheila. Someone has put sleeping pills in the guard's coffee. Hmm, that's part of their plan, said Paul. The train will stop in the tunnel and the guard will be asleep. The men will steal the bags of money from the train and escape up the shaft. But these men have taken bags into the cottage, said Sheila. What are they for? The bags are full of paper, said Paul. They look like the bags of money. The soldiers won't find the paper until tomorrow morning. Then these men will be far away from here. We can run down to the telephone box, said Sheila. We can telephone the police from there. There isn't enough time, said Paul. We have to stop these men. We can put heavy stones over the shaft. Then the men can't get out. And Charles can run down and telephone the police, said Sheila. Now all the knots were untied. And Paul was free. They climbed out of the window. Charles was waiting for them in the darkness. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The train from London was in the long tunnel. The signal is red, said the driver to his mate. That's unusual. The train slowed down. It stopped on a long bend in the tunnel. The driver's mate looked back. The end of the train was out of sight. What about the money in the guard's van? the mate asked the driver. Don't worry, replied the driver. Pete's a good guard. The driver watched the signal. It was red. The train waited in the long tunnel. Frank and his men were in the tunnel. They were waiting at the bottom of the shaft. The train slowed down and stopped. The guard's van was in front of them. Frank quickly climbed up. He opened the lock on the door of the guard's van. He looked inside. It's all right, he said to the others. The guard has drunk the coffee. He's sleeping. Frank threw down the bags of money. Throw up the bags of paper, he told his men. And move quickly. We haven't much time. A few minutes later, Frank and his men were at the bottom of the shaft. They were carrying the bags of money. Get up to the cottage, Frank said. I'll follow you in a moment. The signal changed from red to green. The train moved towards Hlanvoy station. Good, thought Frank. The plan has worked. At the top of the shaft, Sheila and Paul were working fast in the darkness. There was a heavy iron cover at the entrance to the shaft. They pulled the cover over the entrance and put some heavy stones on top of it. The first of Frank's men reached the top of the shaft. His head hit the iron cover. He reached up with one hand and pushed. The cover did not move. There's something wrong, he shouted. I can't get out. Below him in the shaft, the other men waited. They were trapped. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. The police moved quickly. A police car came to the telephone box. Charles jumped in and they drove fast towards the cottage. The police arrested two men at the top of the shaft. An hour later, Sheila, Paul and Charles were in the police station at Barconi. Thanks to you, we've got the men and the money, said the police sergeant. We arrested the other two men at Hlanvoy station. But there were five men, said Paul. Have you arrested the leader? He's called Frank. Sheila, Charles and Paul spent the night in the home of the police sergeant. The next morning, the sergeant left early. I must go to the police station, he told them. I'll phone you later in the morning. At breakfast, Sheila turned on the radio. Here is a police message. The police are looking for Frank Steele, aged 40. 
This man was last seen on the railway line to Hlanvoy station in the early hours of this morning. He is a dangerous... Sheila turned off the radio. It's a strange beginning to a holiday, she said. Later the phone rang. Paul answered it. It was the sergeant. Good news, said the sergeant. A police car has picked up Frank Steele. Paul put down the phone. The police have arrested Frank Steele, he said to the other two. That's great, said Sheila. Now we can go back to the cottage and begin our holiday. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want.